So I'm out walking the dog. Let's get a look at the dog. There he is right there in all his glory. Anyway, uh, and I wanted to weigh in on world events as I, as I see them. Because uh, I think I got a different perspective than some things that you may not have thought about. So the, you know, we all know, I haven't seen, luckily, any of the footage of the uh, horror that took place in uh, Israel. But uh, I don't know, you know, there's all sorts of conflicting information. There's one report that said that that they didn't shoot up the kids that were having the party, that, that was, they were caught in the crossfire because there was an Israeli battalion there and, uh, and they were shooting it out across the kids. Possibility, I suppose, I don't know. It seems like a lot of the right-wingers, uh, you know, when I say right-wingers, I'm talking about like Glenn Beck or some of the radio talk show hosts, they say they've got the footage. I haven't seen any of it and I haven't seen any of it on X, which is good, I, I wouldn't want to see it. But uh, I don't think that anybody's looking at the big picture of what was accomplished here um, by doing these horrendous things. They've enraged the Israelis and they're getting the reaction that they want. Last I heard, 6,000 bombs have been dropped on Gaza. That's about 90,000, and by my estimates, that's about 90,000 people, women, children, men, killed. You don't think that's going to you know that that's not going to enrage the Arab world I've seen pictures of, of Jordanians uh, they might overthrow their government you know that's a Western government in Jordan um, they don't like their government to begin with so they may uh, they may just overthrow their government and they're all marching towards the border uh, they want they want to go in and kill Israelis um, so and then nobody gives Hezbollah credit they're, they're armed to the teeth now we got two aircraft carriers but uh, the other thing that that's going to be interesting is we've given all of our weapons and ammunition to Ukraine. How much do we have left to give to Israel? That'll be uh, interesting. And then if the, if the war does spread, are we going to put U.S. troops on the ground? I don't see how the Israelis are going to fight Hamas. And by the way, that's going to be bloody fighting down in those caves and uh, underground tunnels and everything. That's exactly where Hamas wants Israel. You know, they, they, they're, they've been pinned behind the wall for quite some time. Now they're bringing the Israelis to them. So if you want to look at the strategy, whether you agree with them or not, it was a good strategy so that they can kill a lot of people, a lot of Israelis. Of course, they're going to die too. So, uh, so that's, the, that's the question. And, and of course, if the aircraft carriers, I'm sure they'll bomb Hezbollah, but that doesn't do any good. Hezbollah, I don't think that we're giving the, um, the Middle East credit that it deserves. I, I hear a lot of people saying that Iran had a hand in this. I don't see any evidence that Iran had a hand in this. I mean, other than, uh, if anything, uh, what did what did I hear? Was it Qat Qatar? They're the ones that give Hezbollah, um, I mean, not Hez well, Hezbollah probably, and also Hamas, you know, most of their financing. So I, I don't know. I, and the thing is that if if Israel just goes scorched earth, I mean, I don't think you know this thing's going to stay confined to just uh, Israel against Hamas. You know, when you bring in. Uh, Hezbollah and then you bring in perhaps Jordan and then you bring in Iran and I heard that we've bombed or Israel bombed uh, Syria bring in Syria I mean this this could be the battle that the, the Bible talked about you know that we've all read about Gog against Magog uh, we might be just seeing the beginning of that so and then and this is coming at a time when the United States is weak we got a woke military We've given all of our bombs and weapons to, to Ukraine. So how much have we got left to fight with for ourselves and to give to Israel? These are all questions that I don't think that people are asking. So anyway, I might add to this video because I've been thinking about things on all of this. And, and by the way, I, Garland Nixon, he had a good video. I encourage you to watch it. He was pointing out that a lot of people in Israel have dual citizenship. And uh, how many of those people are going to stay in Israel? So you might see an exodus, you know, because if, if, if you've got your U.S. citizenship and Israeli citizenship, are you going to stay <laughs> and fight in the tunnels under Gaza? I don't know. I think I'd fly back to the United States uh, unless, you know, I really felt strongly about it. Um, I, I wonder how many of them do in today's world. So you could see that. Uh, and then, of course, once these... Uh, and the other thing is I hear that, the you know, the right 
is strong in Israel. There's a, there's a bunch of right-wing lunatics over there. They might drop a nuke. If they drop a nuke, man, I, the whole bets are off. The whole damn Middle East is going to go up in flames. And uh, we don't know if Iran has nukes or not. So I might add to this video, because I had some other thoughts. Oh, yeah, and everybody's trying to tie it back to Russia. I did, yeah, God dang, every, everything's Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. Trump, Russia, Russia, Russia. I mean, you know, Russia didn't have anything... <laughs> anything to do with this. In fact, Putin put out a good uh, a good um, speech and basically he condemned the attack by Hamas and he said that, you know, they're willing to help negotiate a two-state solution and China basically said the same thing. I don't know if they condemned the attack, but they said that they're willing to help negotiate a two-state solution. And see, I I don't think, you know, when, when they go scorched earth, um, you know, we, we may see that because if this goes up before the U.N., and uh, I'm sure the Security Council of the United States will veto it, but they, they put it before the General Assembly, you could see them vote for a two-state solution, and, and that's most of the world aligned against the West. So this is all going to be a really interesting story to see how it all plays out. Uh, I'm glad I'm just out here with the dog, getting a hike in, enjoying nature. Let's just enjoy nature for two seconds. I'm going to take the phone and show you what I see. So if this whole thing is getting you uptight, maybe you want you know, you're on Hamas side and you want all the Israelis dead or you want all the, the Palestinians dead. Maybe get out and enjoy a little nature. Peace out. Stay free. So there were two other things that I forgot to mention. And these were both pointed out by Garland. Garland Nixon, like I said, watch his video. I'm just taking from him. But, you know, it does make you think about things. Because how is Israel going to use a nuke? Unless it's Iran. Okay, because that's right next door. And all that radiation is going to blow back into Israel if they drop it on uh, Hezbollah, for example. So, and they certainly can't use a nuke on um, uh, Gaza. That'd be like nuking yourself. So that was the first point that Garland made. And then, of course, uh, I was checking out the Canadian prepper, and he was pointing out that the United States uh, is, hasn't declared uh, Israel uh, a place not to go. So I imagine that people from the United States can go back and forth, but all the other nations around, like Australia, um, Great Britain, um, they're evacuating all their people from Israel. So there's another exodus for you. So you might have a lot of Israelis leaving. You might have, you've already got a lot of uh, uh, people that were visiting, so the tourist industry is going to take a huge hit. Uh, I guess Americans can travel back and forth. I don't know why. I wouldn't want to go over there right now, would you? Anyway, that's it. I just wanted to point that out. Ah, one other thing. I told you I'd just add to this video as I thought of things. So I was listening to, I don't remember, I think it was Todd Stearns. And he was talking about, well, they played the, the video of the Forbes uh, woman. And, uh, and she was screaming. And uh, I heard it on the radio. And she says, I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my legs. Well, her legs have been blown off. And the story that he gave on the radio was that that was a Hezbollah rocket. Now, when I put that out uh, to my community in X, I got a lot of uh, people saying, oh, hell no, those were Israeli bombs that blew her legs off. So, I, you know, that's why I'm saying we're getting such conflicting information out of everybody. I'm not sure who to believe on that. But I just, uh, that, did, that did upset me to think of, imagine going through life with no legs from, from this point on. And all she was trying to do was just report on the story. And uh, if, if Israel did it, they, they definitely owe her compensation for life. Same with Hezbollah. But uh, I doubt she'll, she'll get it. Anyway, that's, that's just a story. Because I wanted to just give you an example of the conflicting information that's coming out. So you know, I'm not sure what to believe. Uh, the baby story is another one. Um, I've heard uh, that there was a bunch of babies with their heads chopped off and then other people on X are saying no that's not true it's been uh, it's been debunked once again conflicting information so we don't know all right peace out so here's another one for you 
I was uh, listening now, all of the uh, right wing radio hosts are quoting the Wall Street Journal saying that they printed an article that Iran was involved in the attack. Now, these are the same people that have been reporting on how Wall Street Journal is the most unreliable source in <laughs> this is like CNN. That's like listening to CNN. Wall Street Journal's lied about everything. They've lied about the Ukraine war. They lied about the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. They've lied about the Hunter Biden laptop. I mean, and now they're just going to take the Wall Street Journal at their word that, uh, that Iran was involved. And of course, Iran has denied that of any involvement. But I mean, I'm just listening to these guys and I'm thinking, you're the same dudes, man, that were saying that, you know, Wall Street Journal is, is going out of business because nobody believes them anymore. I know I don't. Do you? So here's another one for you as I get hooked up here. Uh, let me get the sun in front of me. Anyway, these right wing hosts are bragging about how magnanimous Israel is to give one million people a day to evacuate. Can you imagine? I mean, think about it. A million people were trying to leave New York City. You think they could do it in a day? They know that the, Pakistan, or the uh, Palestinians can't get out in a day, but you listen to a right-wing radio host, oh yeah, the Israelis, are, they're, they're doing the right thing. They're doing the right thing. If the Palestinians uh, stay behind, then they all deserve to die. They deserve to die. Oh man, I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler. That nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, sooner or later God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later God's gonna cut you down.